thanks for uh, coming out. Appreciate that. And, um, you know, couldn't be any more proud of our guys this season. Uh, the way things ended, finish the season very strong and um, give our uh, players a lot of credit for the effort they put forth throughout the season. And Jason and the staff, uh, an amazing job with the work they put in. What do you take away from this season? Obviously, you have major injuries in the middle of it and two key guys, and then you make trades right before the It was just kind of a strange season. So what do you take away from this? No, you, ta you take away from this that uh, the future is extremely bright. Couldn't be any more excited about the future of the Milwaukee Buck organization. So um, I think we're uh, in, a, in a good position today, and it's only going to get better as, uh, as we move forward. How gratifying is it in, in the playoff series to, to have the Bradley Center, the, the atmosphere it had, and with the players that you brought in to, to be playing at the level that they played at? Well, you know, the atmosphere, the atmosphere, look, the one thing that, that, that I know, I know about Milwaukee is that, uh, and the state of Wisconsin, and we have good fans. The Milwaukee Buck fans are good fans, and we've always said if we just give them a little, They'll give us back tenfold. They'll come support us. So um, I think they got excited about what was happening, and we knew when we kind of – it's our responsibility to create that excitement. We create that excitement. They're going to come watch us play. We know that. Giannis has a great year this year, probably in all NBA discussion. What kind of uh, what kind of convenience is that for you as a general manager to have a building block, block like Giannis going forward? Well, that's what it is. He's a building block, and and um, you know when you have a player of that magnitude, uh, it just gives you confidence. I think it gives everyone. Uh, everyone confidence. It gives us organizational confidence. It gives the coaching staff confidence. I think it gives our, our fan base confidence, uh, knowing that we have a player at, at that level. And, you know, the exciting thing about him is he's 22 years old. You stop and think about his age and how young he is. And once again, with just the, the age of this team, you know, with Jabari and his youth and Giannis and his youth and Thon, and we can keep on going. We have a lot of young players in this group that, uh, that we think are going to continue to improve. Giannis is the building block, John. What kind? Of, what do you need to put around him even more than you have attempted to do? In well, look. When you say the building block, you know you don't leave out a guy like Chris Middleton to say he's another building block piece, and a guy like Jabari Parker, he's a building block piece. And we'll see what else we have. Who else can be can be be a part of that group? You know, can Thom Maker be a guy like that someday? Maybe, potentially, he could. A guy like Malcolm Brogdon. We've got, I think, you know, other building block pieces of a guy like Matthew Dellavedova, who's you know that kind of that one of those core. Um, 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 you'd say he's a kind of a, um, um, you know, a um, a guy that uh, you can build around, and, and he, he wants to win. He's a part of winning. John, how much does it help when you look at the free agency period when you have a guy like Giannis, who people seem to be excited to play for and then did? Well, you know, that's what happens. You know, when you have a really good team, players want to be a part of it. That's what we're hoping that we can become at some point. Um, it, it's, it, it's a pretty easy formula. You know, they all say, right, if you build it, they will come. And, and, and you have a good enough team. Guys want to be a part of that. And uh, I think, you know, Giannis has the potential to be that kind of player at some point in his career, hopefully very soon. Last season, I, I know we talked, uh, I think in the summer, a lot about shooting and adding shooting. Is, is there something you circle with this team that you think you need going forward? Shooting. <laughs> you know, and I, I th it's interesting. I think we've said this before, but I think you probably go around to the other 29 teams in the NBA and you start saying, if we could add one thing, what would it be? Uh, most, most everyone needs shooting. Look, the object of this game is still to put the ball in the basket. And if you can put the ball in the basket, even with range, uh, better yet. So the three-point shooting is a factor. It's not going to go any way, anywhere. Um, we, need to, uh, we need to continue to Im improve in that area like most other teams in the league. John, is that because the, that's the way the league's going that you need shooting, or is that because you need shooting to go with Giannis and, and Jabari kind of slashers like that? Both. Both, no doubt whatsoever. Look, that's, that's where the league is going. You know, we, we kind of talked about that and said, you know, there, there was a point where you could say, look, the game is going to be won at the basket. At the basket, but yet at the free throw line as well. You've got to be able to finish at the basket. Uh, you got to be able to get the ball to the basket, you got, but you got to step up and make a free throw. You know, to me, I think the game has changed from that aspect a little bit. Now you look and say, the game is won and lost at the free at the three point line, and so the game is stretched. The, the floor is stretched so much more than it used to be. But it's still, you got to be able to make your free throws and win at the line. But so you say at the basket at the free throw line. Now it's to me at the three point line and at the free, at the line as well. It's were, trying to. Oh, go ahead. Were you encouraged by Jabari's shooting outside this year? Yeah, look, you know, Jabari, 
Jabari was on his way to having a great season, obviously. You know, we look at him and talk about what he was doing, averaging 20 points a game and doing that at 21 years old. And I think it was realistic to say he was in that all-star discussion uh, this season. So how could you not be excited about that? And, you know, he added that to his game. He added some uh, 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 range to his shot, and he's going to continue to get better. How is his progression coming along? It's amazing. You know, you, you watch him early on especially, and even yet kind of today you would say you watch him and think, wow, he's going to play very soon. Now, once again, I think our medical staff is going to be very careful with him. They're talking about a year, which would probably put us at the all-star break next season. Um, but he's doing great, and, you know, a couple things in regards to Jabari. He's, um, he's been through this, been through it once, so he knows what he has to do to get back on the floor. I think that's very important for him. And the second thing is uh, have complete uh, confidence in Troy Flanagan and our medical team, uh, Suki Hobson in particular, who did uh, uh, the, the most of the work with Jabari. And, you know, with the first injury, they said, they said that we can bring him back. We'll bring him back with him doing the work, of course. Uh, but with their guidance, we can bring him back bigger, better, stronger. He did that. And the same thing is being said right now, and I have complete confidence that will happen again. Taking a look at Jabari, I think we all remember getting together in the fall for Giannis's contract extension. Jabari would be eligible for that same early extension. And if he stays healthy, I think that's probably something you guys pursue. But how does his injury change that and how you guys approach trying to figure out what his future is here in Milwaukee? Well, look, as far as his future in Milwaukee, we think it's long term. Um, and that's that's the goal that always has been the goal. And, and um, I think all we do is, you know, we have discussions, maybe they Maybe they, um, uh, you know, come from different directions right now as to what we can do with him. But, um, um, you know, a couple of things. Number one, we want Jabari here. Number two, he wants to be here. Similar to Giannis. And I think uh, with that in mind on both parties, I think that uh, that, that will happen. Going back to that three-point shooting, you mentioned, obviously, trying to add shooters, trying to add shooters. And this year, you guys shot quite a few more three-pointers, but still end up in the bottom third of the league. How do you try to keep up with a league that just seems to be shooting more and more threes at just a crazy clip? Well, I think, I think you know, you start from improvement from within, that the guys on, on your team, that, that um, they continue to work to increase their range, get more comfortable shooting the three-point shot. That's one thing, probably first and foremost. And the second thing is you look to add those kind of players to your team. Have you had an indication either way from Greg about his status and, and when do you expect to, to know um, his decision? Uh, no, we haven't had any discussions with Greg in that regard uh, at this point, and um, he'll, he'll let us know accordingly. How do you try to approach that? Because obviously it's his player option rather than like a team option. Do you approach that any differently? No, look, I think, you know, you, you try to have a very professional approach and, and uh, have complete respect for the player. You don't put him in a compromising position and start asking him questions that, that would be unfair to him to answer. He has an agent that, that works with him in that regard. But um, at this time, it's a time just to, to let Greg um, settle in and, and, and make the decision that will be best for him. I believe his opt-in date is draft night. Does, is that something you guys had negotiated to work out that you'd have kind of that draft night decision? and? be able to know where you're going with uh, the future going forward? On all of those things, I'm sorry. On all, on all of those things, it's uh, you know something that's negotiated. You know, the, the agent always wants a later date. We want an earlier date, so we're, we're comfortable with what we worked out. With your draft picks, Thon at this point, was it such an unknown? Brogdon was kind of passed over by a lot of teams. Could you imagine it going really any better than it did with Thon coming on as a starter, Brogdon potentially rookie of the year? Well, uh, no, it worked out. it worked out extremely well. But, you know, I'll say once again that um, those only work out well when you have a coach and a staff that's willing to put them on the floor and play those young guys. So if, uh, if they don't play, we're not saying that about them today. So um, Jason put them on the floor. He gave them an opportunity. And uh, those guys took advantage of the opportunity before them. With Giannis, we talked about that next step. What did you see out of him that changed where he was able to take the next step and become one of those superstars in the NBA? <sighs> work. You know, uh, one thing about Giannis, I, you know, I've, I've had a chance in my 25 years in the NBA to be around these guys and see these guys. I've seen them as a coach. I've seen them as a person in the front office. And um, they all have one trade in common, and that's work. They have gifts, gifts that get them to a certain level, but, but they also have this amazing drive and desire to want to be great and to, be want to, to want to be the best. I think Giannis has that. A couple of years ago with the Bulls series, it was a loss, but it was one where – People thought you guys took him, up, 
took him to the limit, had him on the ropes or whatever. I feel like it's kind of a lot of that same theme this year, but what's different about still losing to Toronto, but yet it seems like there's a ton more confidence going forward? Yeah, I think it's all about the youth of the team. You know, I think that, that look, nothing sells like winning. And um, this, if you don't have that, nothing sells like hope. And um, so I think everybody sees there's the hope. There's the future. It's evident and obvious right in front of everyone. You mentioned being on the same page as your coach and getting players on the floor. To start the season, obviously, you make a trade for Tony Snell, and you kind of make some moves there to start the season, and then that moves Malcolm into a bigger role. How do you approach that or as an organization to get those guys on the floor and be on the same page with your coach? Well, it's, it's you know, look, our job is to, is to you know, um, bring the best players we can to the organization. And... Um, Obviously, I, you know, I, I think in, in situations like this, when I say it's our job to do that, our job is, that's Jason's a part of those decisions. So, um, um, you know, we work together in that regard. Um, once that happens, once the team takes the floor, though, and they get between those lines, it's a coach's decision as, and who's going to play. And guys, they earn those rights. If they earn the right to be on the floor, they're going to play. If they can help us win games, they're going to play. Speaking of Tony Snell, he had a career year, obviously a huge contributor for you guys, but now he's a restricted free agent. How much does a career year like that make it more difficult for you to keep, you know, someone like Tony? Well, no, it's it's great for Tony. You know, when you're happy for a guy like that, um, that that uh, you know, we always talk about if you can build and win with good people, life is so much easier, so much more enjoyable. And um, appreciate Tony Snell, like other guys on our roster, appreciate their basketball abilities but really appreciate him and a guy like Tony for what he stands for as a person. Outstanding guy, another guy that you want to have as a part of your team moving forward because he's about the right things. And um, I think, you know, Tony wants to be here. Tony enjoyed his year and uh, we're hoping to bring him back. He's, re he's a restricted free agent and uh, we're planning on him being with us next season. What are you looking for from Chris next year? You know, you brought him back and he had some great moments. And That, there it is, Tom. It's all, for him. It's just getting healthy. You know, we know who Chris Middleton is. We know what kind of player he is. And um, um, you know, if we say, well, maybe he did have some struggles at, at, at times this year, it was only because he wasn't healthy. You could see it. You could see that he wasn't. He, you know, he wasn't able to finish at the basket, get to the basket as qu as quickly as he as he could. His overall speed was affected by his injury. Um, but look, you know. I'll just say, you look what Chris Middleton did that last game of the season. It was remarkable what he was dealing with. And for him to go out and, and play 42 and a half minutes in that game, um, and if you'd have seen him the next day what he was dealing with, um, you talk about a man winning someone's respect, and you think, can you win with a person like that and a player like that? No question whatsoever. He, I, I, I couldn't be any more proud of of a guy than what Chris Middleton did this season, more importantly, what he did at the very end for us when we needed him the most. Really, the question is, should he have played that last game? Probably not, but he did. He did it for his teammates, he did it for the coaches, he did it for this organization, he did it for the fans. That guy sacrificed a lot to be out in that court, and I, 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 I can't tell you how, how much I, I think of his, him and his efforts. When you mentioned Tony Snell, you talked about the teammate he is, the person that he is. And when you talk to Giannis, when you talk to Jabari, they always bring that up, that Tony's such a great guy. When you make that trade, do you have any idea that he's that type of teammate, that type of person? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, Gar Foreman said that to me. He said, John, you know, everybody loves this guy. He's a great guy. You know, the coaches love him. The coaches had a chance to, ch chance to coach him, have enjoyed him. And... Um, uh, look, you know, we, we all we all worry about that. We all worry about like trading those like, like those high quality people or not retaining those kind of quality people. And so, look, that's that's who Tony is, and and our plan is to have him right back here with us next season. In, in the same way that you try to approach Greg's player option, how do you try to approach restricted free agency? Obviously, that's something you've dealt with many times before. Well, it you know, it, restricted free agency is what it is. It's you know, we have the right of first refusal. So. Um, you know, we'll see how it goes if, you know, if we have to, you know, drag ourselves into that process or if we can uh, maybe get something done uh, sooner potentially with Tony. Tom, you're talking about some of the future of the players. How about your future and long-term plans for the team? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm under contract again for, uh, for next season and, and could not uh, be more excited to, uh, to be a part of this organization. Like I said, I think the future is extremely bright. There's so many fronts. You know, you, 
um, you look at the ownership and, and things that uh, uh, Wes and Mark and Jamie have done, you know, you look at our facilities, we're going to be moving into a new, new practice facility, Goodbye Cousin Center. Uh, it's been a great home, but, you know, moving into a new facility this summer is going to be great. You see the arena popping up out of the ground. Uh, just so, so, so many positive things, I think, happening all over on the or in the organization, from the ownership st standpoint, from the basketball standpoint, from the business standpoint, a lot of positive things. Does that make you want to see things through and bigger longer, just player-wise, even arena-wise, all of that? O always, always happy for every opportunity that we have in this league. I, I guess thinking about that a little bit more, how, how much more, do you, or how, how many more years do you want to do this? Is, is there kind of a, a point where you think, you know what, I, I, I've had enough of this? No, I don't, I don't, you know, I think those of us that have these opportunities, I don't think we ever look at it that way. I think, you know, we, we, we know how lucky we are, we know how fortunate we are to have the, to have a chance to do something like this. Um, and, um, you know, you appreciate every single day. John, I feel like it's going to be a little quieter off season this year. Outside, we've talked about Greg and Tony, and I think outside of like Spencer, the roster is pretty intact. You haven't had that in a while. Do you think it'll be a little quieter? We'll see. We'll see how things go. Look, we're always going to look to improve our team in any way that we can. We know our options, right? We got we start with the draft, and then trade, and then free agency. So we have three options to improve the team, uh, and uh, we're always looking to looking to do that. What do you think of this year's draft? What do you what do you see when you think about that? It's a very good draft. It's a very good draft. You know, we're setting at 17, and uh, we think we can get a good player at 17. I think the uh, the front end of the draft is very, very good. And um, I, I'm not one to say that very often. I usually get very guarded on, on, on drafts. I'm not able to see the future like that, I guess. But I think in this one, I think you can see the future. You can see these guys. There's a grouping of guys that have a chance to be special players in this league. And I think even down at 17, we're going to get a very good player. I guess as your team's getting better, you have a good playoff run, you find the guy that you really believe in, Giannis. Is this the time where you start to think, okay, maybe we'll make a trade to find just one piece that we're really looking for? Or is it still trying to build a complete roster? No, it could be. It could be. You know, look, it, I, I, think, I think we're still to the point that we don't want to mortgage the future today. But if there's an opportunity that we can do something to help us be better in the immediate, uh, we'll look at that. Taking a look at the D League now with you guys having an affiliate and maybe being able to do those two-way contracts, is that something that affects your approach with the draft, that maybe you trade back into the second round for a, a guy that you like and you want to put on one of those? Um, we could. We have, you know, the great thing is we have no encumbered picks. We have all of our own picks, all of our own first and second round picks. And um, so uh, the D League is just going to be a great opportunity for us. Um, you know, the, there's gems that can be found in the D League. And um, uh, we're looking forward to that opportunity to have our own team, to use that for uh, players that are on your roster currently, um, with, um, upcoming current roster, and, um, and you know, be able to, to improve from within there and, uh, and you know, maybe find that player that uh, they're there. You look around the NBA uh, uh, rosters today and you can see players that have been a part of the D-League process and, and where they've come from. Does it, does it change your evaluation process this time of year, maybe going deeper and uh, on guys that maybe aren't going to be first or second rounders? Well, I, I think it, it, I don't know that it, it, it changes the evaluation process and going deeper. I think we always go as deep as we have to and need to. Um, I think all it does is now you have the reality that this is here for you. This opportunity to have a D-League team is, is a real uh, realistic opportunity. What did you think of Jason's job this year? Obviously, like I said, as we started, injuries to two major players as you go through, and for them to still make the playoffs, that, that would seem like that's a, a job well done from Jason. Extremely. I thought um, Jason, Jason did a great job coaching this team. You know, I think, once again, at the end of the day, he pushed all the right buttons. You know, um, I say there's not a lot of coaches out there necessarily that would, you know, march a guy like Thon Maker out onto the floor like he did when he did. And that turned out to be a real lift for us. So um, um, not only that, but, you know, Malcolm, other young players, I think some of the improvement that we've had within guys within our own roster. But, you know, um, uh, I, you know I've always say that, Jason and his staff, 
work as hard as any staff I've ever been around. I've been around a lot of staffs, and so once again, that work ethic I think carries on, carries over from how they work as a staff to how our team works on the floor. You mentioned Thon starting getting those starts mid-year and kind of moving into that role. When he talked to us last week, he said the, it was project build Thon, like that was the goal for this season, and then all of a sudden he, he gets thrust in the starting lineup. What, as an organization, goes into that decision? Look, the, the decision was, we, you know, we drafted him where we did, and, and we thought he had upside and thought he had a chance to be a, a very good player in this league someday. But uh, to be honest with you, I didn't know how soon he was going to get on the floor just because of strength. You know, we said we're hoping that, you know, we talked about that we could, uh, uh, from a, uh, 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 a yearly standpoint, put 7 to 10 pounds on him per year and eventually get him at 230, 235. Um, you know, we had him out there this year, whatever he was, 215, 220. But, you know, you can never underestimate the heart of a guy. And I think we all know one thing Thon has is, is, you know, he's got great energy, great effort, and a big heart. It, was it encouraging to see him play so much center? Because I'm not sure maybe in the draft process if that was something you thought it, that he would for sure be a five. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that we did know that, but he's a seven-footer, you know, and um, I think still does he have the ability to, to be able to play some four at some point, some, some power forward he can. Because you can see one thing he can do is he can really move his feet defensively. So, you know, it's fun, though, having a guy that athletic and the guy that can move his feet at the, at the center position as well and run and try to outrun bigs. But, look, eventually, eventually for Thon, we can talk about who he is and what he's going to be. But nothing's really changed. He still has to add strength to become that player. And it's going to happen. Just a matter of time than him to put the work in. Last summer, you guys added Justin Zanuck as the assistant GM. I think about a month before the draft. Going into this draft, how does he help out in that process? How has he made a part of that process? He's he's a part of the process. He's a part of the draft process. You know, we've got um, guys that are out there watching games. You know, it's uh, Billy McKinney and Dave Babcock, uh, Justin, John Horst, Dave Dean, myself. We're all out there, so we're all part of this draft process, and uh, we all, you know work as hard as we can and, and try to prepare the, the best that we can and then make the best decision possible. With an offseason like this where you have so many guys, or I guess guys up in the air that affect your cap space, how do you approach that Like with Tony and with Greg that are going to make decisions close to the time you guys have to make decisions? Well, the, the, the Greg decision is not ours to, to make. That's his to make. So uh, we'll deal with that as is. And, and I thought Greg had a great season this year. And you look what he did for us. And you start thinking about how you replace a guy like that, not – not easy, but uh, once again, it's his decision to be made. And as far as uh, Tony's concerned, uh, as I said, our plan is to have him back next year. Taking a look at the guys you signed in free agency last year, Miles, Mirza, and, and Matthew, what did you think of their contributions this season? Well, you know, Deli, Deli is, is who he is. He's that culture guy. He's going to bring all the right things to your organization. He's going to put forth that amazing effort. He's going to put forth that amazing energy. He's great. He's a great teammate. He's easy to coach. So I don't think we could ask anything more from him. Um, you know, Mirza, it's interesting. Mirza made a comment to me at the, at the end of the season. He goes, you know, my, my first year in Brooklyn, I struggled. And he said, I came back my second year and played extremely well. And he goes, that's my plan to do here. He goes, I, I didn't play as well as I wanted to. I wish I could have been better, but I know I can come back better next season. So I, I believe that in him. And he's a good man. He's a good worker. And uh, uh, he'll come back and be very good for us next year. And, uh, you know, Miles, we were able to, uh, you know, we traded him and, and wishing nothing but the best for him. You know, when it comes to the two-way contract that uh, Eric mentioned before, is that something that you can utilize with, with Gary Payton? Was that window not open when you added it? Um, at, at, at this point, um, you know, we, we can always you know keep our options open, but for next year, we have we we have under contract for next season.